Shalom Aleichem, Am Yisrael, and good people of the world. My name is Judah Michelle, and I have the extraordinary privilege and pleasure of participating in this year's uh, Amudim program, uh, and to introduce the great light to the world, to the nation, uh, my brother uh, and yours, Arki Stamen, coming to you live from some undisclosed location in a Humvee. What's going on, Arky? I'm good. I'm good. Let's call it outside of Gaza. We could call it right around Gaza right now. <laughs> okay, so I'm also outside of Gaza, but I think and go. so is everybody. Everybody there here, everybody who's watching this is right now outside of Gaza. <laughs> You're a little bit more outside of Gaza than maybe the rest of us. Right, or a little bit less. <laughs> <laughs> I just before anything, Arky. Baruch yep. Hamakadesh Shmo Berabim. Blessed is the one who has sanctified God's name in public for the masses. What oh, a man. great privilege it is to be here together with you. What a <laughs> what 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 a moment in history it is uh, for all of Am Yisrael and and for you and what a message you're carrying. Well, I really appreciate it. It's uh, it's been a been a crazy month and a half for everybody, and we're just going through all this. All this together, you know? Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I, first of all, I'm grateful to Amudim. Amudim works very hard uh, to help all of us to strengthen and uh, provide services, mental health services, and all sorts of support for for, for really anybody uh, anybody in need. And uh, during these days, these have been, this has been, uh, I mean, I don't know when this is going to be airing, but right now we're holding day number 40-something, uh, since Simchas Torah, and uh, this has been a tremendous strain on uh, on everyone. Um, I'd say maybe maybe most of all uh, those who are on uh, the front lines, and uh, that's you, Arky. And yeah. somehow throughout it all, you've managed to to share a message of positivity and strength, uh, of optimism and of faith for so many. Uh, where are you drawing from? I mean, where you, where, where how, how are you pulling? How are you pulling such chizik for all of us? <laughs> so it's not going to be an answer anybody's anybody's going to get anything from. But I'm just trying to stay myself, and that's the truth. Is I'm just trying to be me. And um, if if what I can give to Am Yisrael is is a smile and a little positivity, then that's what I'm going to offer. And that's that's kind of who I am. I'm not trying to be anybody that I'm not. Um, I'm not trying to. Uh, to change anything, but Amisel needs a little bit more smiles right now, and Amisel needs some more simcha and positivity. And mm -hmm. so, if that's something that I can give, and people need that, then I'm I'm so happy to be able to to be Hashem's messenger. Amazing, that's right. Where are you exactly? Like not exactly in your location, but what 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 role are you? What, where what role are you, and and where are you exactly in Sahal right now? Okay, so um, we are, right now I'm in a Hummer. <laughs> That's exactly where I am right now. In my, in my Hummer, you can see the little steering wheel right here. Um, so we are part of a unit that is, for those who have heard of the organization Zaka, we're Zaka behind enemy lines. So I'll explain that to anybody who's never heard of it. Basically, we're the body collection team. And the first thing that happens when... God forbid, either a soldier or a group of soldiers, something happens to them that's devastating, that's terrible, and they're killed, everything kind of stops. And we are the next ones to have to come in under fire behind enemy lines and make sure that every soldier that went out to war comes back and is able to be buried. And sometimes that means um, bringing back full soldiers, and unfortunately it sometimes means searching for the the parts so it's yeah it's an intense role we all of us understand the amazing schut and mitzvah it is to be able to do it and none of us want to do it right yeah. absolute yeah. absolute so i mean in your civilian life uh you're uh <laughs> Uh, I mean, I've, I've been following you online. Um, you're you're a person who's engaged in, I don't know how else to say, other than like a real tikkun hamaraglim, um, a real fixing of 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 dibata of that negative 
speech that the Miraglim had with a lack of confidence to just see negative and say negative about the land of Israel. Um, as a tour guide, you guys could check out the uh, Israel with Arki. Um, that's his handle. It's it's phenomenal. It's inspiring. It's positive. It's beautiful. Um, how, how do you make that switch from being someone who is showing others the beauty of the land of Israel, the life of Eretz HaChaim, of, of the beauty of the land of Israel and, and spending time with, with families and, and, and with groups to transitioning like on a dime, Simchas Torah, uh, going from a place of incredible light to a place that uh, uh, seems to be a place of incredible darkness and heaviness. Um, it's not easy. <laughs> it's definitely not easy. I would say that the best thing that I can do is just kind of like what we were talking about before. Continue what I was doing back then, which was keeping positive and, and having what I do basically on my tours is that we have a lot of fun and we bring the joy into Eretz Israel. And we, I'm, I'm very um, focused on making everything kid friendly and having it be amazing for families and interactive. So I'm as strange as that is, I'm bringing that sort of positive attitude from tour guiding to the efforts in the war, which is showing everybody that uh, that there's that we can't just be sitting at home and and scrolling and crying and trying to bring out that that positivity. So that's that's obviously what I'm trying to bring from my past life into this. But the transition was hard, you know, uh, just like. A lot of people here in Israel, we were in the middle of a kafot and I'm sitting there and, and they made an announcement. The nearest bomb shelter is right down the street. I'm thinking to myself, like, I live in Tekoa. If you look at Tekoa on a map, it's nowhere near any. It's not near Gaza. It's not near Syria or Lebanon. And it's like, why would they be saying that? That's such a strange thing to say. And then um, obviously the rumors start flying around. And I go outside and you start hearing about a terrorist attack. I remember thinking to myself, like, wow, it must be terrible. Maybe, you know, 20, 30 people must have been killed. That, that's awful. That's horrendous. And obviously nobody could have ever fathomed, you know, what, what was actually going on at the time. And that's when I ran home. And I knew I was a, I'm a, I'm a civilian, but I also know that in wartime I can get called up. So I run home turn on my phone, you know, on Simchat Torah. I'm turning on my phone just in case I get a call from the army. My in-laws were there from the States and I told them, like, listen, I remember saying the most interesting thing. I came home and I said to my my wife and my kids and my, and my in-laws, I said, something has happened in Israel that is the biggest thing since the Yom Kippur War. I, I don't even know why I said that. I don't even know what made me say that. We didn't know anything at the time. But just the feeling and just Everything around the rumors made it super real. And um, so I grabbed my phone. I'm in shul. And I didn't actually expect to get the call because we only get called up when things are really bad. You know, when soldiers are, are deep and, and something terrible happens and we have to go in. We don't generally deal with civilians. We don't generally deal with uh, that, uh, terrorist attacks. That's Zaka's job. But um, but I got the call in the middle of the day and said goodbye to my kids, goodbye to my family, not knowing would it be a day, a month, a year. I had no idea. And I, honestly, we still don't know. And thank God I've been able to get home. So you say goodbye to the kids, you say goodbye to your wife, and there's a balance between you want them to be calm and not over nervous and on the other hand, you're saying goodbye and you're going off to war and you don't know, you know, how, how big of a deal should you make this, right? right. And then when you get right. called up, you go into you go into army mode very quickly, you know? You go into army mode and you start getting your equipment and then your mindset already changes. And by the first night of Simchat Shabbat night, Simchat Torah, Saturday night, at Motsi Simchat Torah, we were already in Far Aza in the areas of the massacres and um, loading up and taking care of bodies already on the first night. So, like you said, one minute we're we're dancing Simchat Torah, and the, the other minute we're we're dealing with the massacres. And in a way, that's Israel. There's just a roller coaster. The highs are high, and the lows are low, and it's it's a roller coaster. I, I, what what I've heard from 
from from friends and from family who are in service, who are who are in service or in the army, who are in the middle of battle, who are in the middle of doing their tough key, doing their job, locked in, is that the 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 sense of mission and purpose and clarity is, is there, and the camaraderie, and um, and, uh, and and what they often say is that, you know, from what they hear back home, and we're experiencing it from what's called the OREF, you know, from right. the, the back end, is that um, mm-hmm. the morale is often, I mean, counterintuitively, even stronger at the front than it is in the back, because there's a sense of knowing what you have to do and knowing where you have to be. And, um, and the wife and kids or the parents or the friends were left in the back, and they're wondering, is, is he okay? Has yeah. he slept? Is he safe? Um, has he feeling like, are, you know, are, are they, are they eating? Um, are they in harm's way? And, um, and that fear, that anxiety, uh, that uncertainty um, is something that uh, is really challenging. We're, we're and they, they tell us we're supposed to be chazakim ba'oref, supposed to project a sense of, of strength and, uh, and chosen, of resilience. Um, but w- what's extraordinary is, is that when we're watching you and listening to you, and I, 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 <laughs> I know I speak on behalf of, of quite a few who are here in the civilian sector, um, and, and I, I would even say that people who are watching around the world are wondering, we're sitting here doom scrolling. We're sitting here, you know, zogging to hill him and scratching our heads and maybe cursing under our breaths and 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 walking around feeling helpless and sometimes feeling hopeless. And and then we look and we see Arki Stam and he's collecting bodies, low lane. He's doing Chesed Shalemes with a smile and with a, and with a song on his lips, talking everybody to be Freilach on Shabbos and to bring the Ruach. Where are you drawing from? You said that that's what you need. I understand that, but what what are you double clicking on? What what are you dosing? Where are you? What well are you drinking from, for this type of faith and optimism that us who are who are who are, who are with you, trying to be supportive of you, sometimes feel so exhausted, and the shigrat hamilchama kicks in, and when's he coming home? When are we going to hear from him? What's happening? What's going to be? How, how do we? How, how? Where are you drawing it from? And how can we attach ourselves to it? Oh wow, <laughs> it's, it's such a good question. There's so many levels, so many levels to this. And I think, uh, first of all, that connection between what's going on in the ORF in the home front and what's going on in the front lines—they're totally intertwined. And I'll be the first one to tell you, it is harder for you guys than it is for us. And I think you you tapped into that really well. Like you guys are the ones sitting there worried, scrolling, having these difficulties of what's going on with us. How are we doing? And, and all those worries. And in the end of the day, we are busy. We're working. We're doing what we need to do. And it's we're focused and we're motivated and we feel the feelings from um we, we feel the feelings from what's going on in the home front and it's all intertwined with how we're feeling. So I think as much as people like, it's so strange that people from the home front are getting chizuk, are getting strength from the soldiers and not the opposite, right? You would think it'd be the opposite, right? The people from the home front are giving chizuk. I think that it's both. And I think that it's supposed to be both, right? You're giving us koch with your barbecues and your, I mean, uh, for those of you who are listening and don't know what's going on in Israel for the last m- month and a half, we call our underwear in the army Chadpa. <laughs> it's like you wear it <laughs> once and you throw it out because we just get so many donations of clothes and of food and people coming here and barbecuing. And when you come back from a mission, you can assume that you're going to stop on the side of the road for a mass barbecue that random strangers are just sending to you. And I haven't paid for food in so long and I'm barely eating army food. Like the the strength that I'm getting from you guys that we're all getting from you guys is so powerful. And the strength that we're, that you're getting from us is so powerful. And I think that that's as strange as that is, that's how it's supposed to be. You know what I mean? That's, that's normal. 
So if you're Beautiful. asking me on a personal level, where am I getting, where's the well that I'm drinking from? I'm going to tell you my parents. I'm going to tell you my grandparents. I'm going to tell you the family that I grew up in, the Stamen family. Shout out to, to all the Stamens listening. A, a family that has just showed love and support through every step of the way, no matter how much I've changed throughout my years and all the bumps in the road. I grew up as a ADHD kid trying to fit in in a, in a yeshivish world where sitting and learning all day is expected of you. And that didn't always go perfectly. You know what I mean? But I was always encouraged, take your strengths, take that ADHD and channel it to something that you can just thrive in. So I know your and, parents. I know yeah, your parents. And, you I know can, you're you saying, and I know you're saying something real. Your, your father, your dad, and I, 30, uh, uh, exactly a decade ago, exactly a decade ago, I, uh, uh, in in 2013, worked on a project together, yeah. and um, and um, he did and 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 with your mom with Hannah, uh, they did the beautiful design. I translated Rav Cook's Shir Ha'Emuna, Rav Cook's anthem La Ad Bilvavenu, but the the eternal faith that uh, that exists in the heart of of, of Am Yisrael to return to Eretz Yisrael, um, and um, and to rebuild, and uh, and your parents like they 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 did all the design for it. I know your father's a Balmanagin, so I I know that it's in your blood too, to mm -hmm. to bring the ruach and bring the song. And you're right. I mean, what what do we what what, what can we do other than you know Tafsu Amuna, you know uh, uh, in the 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 faith and the and um, and uh, and the not just the faith, but the the pathways of our of our fathers, which is um, which is emuna and, and joy. But I, I'll tell you, Arky, I'll tell you. Sometimes I watch your stuff, and I and it's hard because you make it look easy. <laughs> and uh, no, I'm I'm being serious. I, if I right. could say a real word, if I could say a real word, you know, uh, everybody, every Jew in the world is their heart is open right now. To, to Eretz Israel, and um, and we want to have your back, and um, and sometimes it's exhausting, and sometimes it's it's just you know, you feel like so far and so helpless, and yeah, you're sending underwear and beefing up our boys, and uh, and doing billboards, and 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 the chaver sending cigarettes and sits us to the front lines and all the good things. Uh, but I'll tell you real, I'll tell you a real word. A year ago, I was a, a I was a spectator. In the last half a year, thank God, our two older daughters got married. Wow. The two incredibly wonderful B'nai Torah young men, great guys. Um, our daughter Teferit's husband, Aaron, they got married. Their their plan was to be in Karen Biavna this year. He's an Avrech, a beautiful Lechtega guy. And uh, and he's in Janin for the past, you know, month and a half or so. And um, and she moved back in over here, you know, right after Simchas Torah. Our other daughter, Ayel Rashachar, yeah, yeah. uh, got, got married uh, right in between Yom Kippur and Sukkot. And two days after Sheva Brachos, Sheva Brachos ended, it was Hoshana Rabbah. That wow. next morning was Simchas Torah. Two days after Sheva Brachos, uh, her husband, who is a gem, the most beautiful guy, uh, Nachshon Vidam Lansky, Nachshon split, it was right in the middle of Hakafos. Um, and he's a uh, Katsin in Yahalom. And wow. uh, yeah, I get a lot of cover from these guys these days. I'll tell right. you, I went from being like, yeah. I went from being like a absolute loser to like, you know, <laughs> like, oh, Sayeret Givati. Ooh, oh, he's a negativist in Sayeret Givati. I don't know. I didn't realize, you know, I'm like, yeah, 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 he's a negativist in Sayeret Givati. Yeah, yeah, oh, Katsin and Yali, of course, Katsinim and Yali. Oh, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, right? All of a sudden, like, you know, and um, and I'll tell you, and and I yell it, literally two days after Shavuot has been here, and we it's two weeks at a time that he's in Gaza, and he just don't we don't hear from him, and um, I have no idea what to do, and this, I have no idea what to say, and I have no idea how to create a supportive and stable, optimistic, faithful space here. Um, when right. you know there's you know maybe politics and 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 the cynicism and the 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 fear factor and the geopolitics and and all of you know it's it's and it confuses and it distracts 
And uh, I'm wondering, I'm just asking you, you know, dad to dad here, like what, what, yeah. what, what, like, what can I say? Like, what, what is there? What, what can I, like, what can I do for them? You know, and there's only so many times you can say, Hey, you want to order sushi or like, maybe, maybe go to Pilates or like, Hey, you want to learn Oro Samuel Chamo with me? Or like, you know, <laughs> um, I, I'm looking for a nugget here. Yeah. To hold yeah. On to. It's, it's so tough. And, um, I can tell you from my perspective, knowing that my wife and children are, are taken care of and are doing well is the number one thing on my head. And we were talking about before things that give me quaff, the to be positive, to know that my wife is, is doing good, even though she's got a five, three and one year old at home by herself for a month and a half. And who knows how much longer, right, is is the most important thing for me straight up. It's, it's more important than how dangerous my mission is or, or what am I doing tomorrow or how much sleep I'm getting. Like, that's where my head's at. Um, are, are they okay? You know, and, and I'm sure that your, your unbelievable son-in-laws, that's where their head's at. So you have to think to yourself, okay, what does my son in Sayeret Givati need most right now? What does my son in Yalom need most right now? He needs... A strong father-in-law. He knows <laughs> the he needs to blow. He needs to blow up those tunnels, dude. He knows the, he needs to. But but from you, those tunnels and get home. No, no, no. <laughs> You're right. You're right. <laughs> but what is the, the most you know, after he blows up those tunnels is to know that everything back at home is in good hands, and that's and that's really up to you. And so, advice that I was given from. Uh, mental health expert talking about Amudim, mental health expert about the seriousness of what I do and making sure that I'm staying sane through all of this. And we can go into that a little bit later because that's a whole nother topic is, um, and you kind of mentioned it before the Pilates and the learning, you have to continue whatever was going on pre-war as much as you can during the war. So if every single day you woke up and, and your daughter would wake up at seven and, and Davin at seven o'clock. She's not waking up at eight because her husband's at war. Do you know what I mean? Like she's still waking up at seven and davening. If every single morning she would go exercise and go for a run, let, that's, she needs to be doing that. And that she gra and you too, that she gra, as they say in Hebrew, that daily routine is so hard because it's the last thing we want to do. And it's so important. Um, so wait, so, the, so you think that that me eating bamba between two and four a.m. cursing yeah, over my breath at the government, like, is that not helpful to you? I mean, that, you're saying that that's not wind in your sails. I feel like no. that's that's an important contribution I'm making. You know, I, I leave my phone on during davening in case Gawan calls for my opinion. Like, I'm I'm trying to be sleep. present. I'm, I'm I'm trying to be here for you guys. <laughs> you know exactly. If it was Bisley, it'd be something else. But no, not the bamba. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so that I, I, knowledge, things going well at the home front and everything is normal, even if they don't know it, just the fact that it's true is is helpful. Yeah, no pressure. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> I'm also I'm, I'm also near Gaza. <laughs> exactly. Uh, front uh, line, yeah, bro. you know, over here. Yeah, I, I have to tell you, I, I have to tell you, you're, you're a ray of light. You are a ray of light. You're everything, when I imagine, and I, I mean this now, I'm not looking to blow smoke here, but I have to tell you, um, I have to tell you, when I, when, when I think about um, aspirationally what we can be as a people, and I think about, you know, where we're headed, um, I draw a lot of koach and a lot of inspiration from our soldiers. From the Chayalim. And I see, like in the words of Hanan Porat, that we are literally writing a new parak in Tanakh. And uh, and the warriors of King David, who are poets and who are singers, who are lovers and who are fighters, who are warriors uh, with faith and with, with light in their eyes, like you, um, are, 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 are doing a lot to lead us toward the light. And um, I just, I, I want to say thank you. I want to say thank you on behalf of all of us. Really, thank I, I, you. Response to that is I'm going to come back from this war with two things being inflated: my belly and my ego. 
<laughs> I, I mean, me, me too, but I'm not, I mean, me too, but I'm not, I mean, I'm, <laughs> and, I'm, and, I'm, and it's worse because I'm walking around getting covered from my from my from my son's in law. Yeah, you know? exactly. <laughs> there, there was um, there was a, a very a very a, a neighbor of ours in the community, um, a friend in the community, um, the early family, um, whose son, yeah. uh, Benjamin Mayer, Hashem Yikom Domo, uh, gave his life al Kiddush Hashem um, this past Shabbos, and um, and. Um, at the uh, Levaya, after his uh, after his dad spoke, um, who's a neighbor here in the community, um, the different family members and and actually some of some of Benjamin's rabbeim spoke. And one of his Rosh Yeshiva from Tzfat, Rabbi Yakubovich, uh, spoke from Tzfat, and he is a, a very lechtig person, a very sensitive and, and and beautiful, elevated person. Um, and we sang together in the pouring rain and the freezing cold of Har Herzl. Um, and uh, we sang Lamana Chai for, for the sake of my brothers and friends, for the sake of of, of Beit uh, Elokeinu, for, for God's house, for the Beit Hamikdash. And he said that Binyamin, you're all about Laman, Laman, you know, for the sake of doing for others, doing for a cause, doing for an ideal. Um, and then he pointed out something which uh, I think is relevant to, to our conversation here. He said that um, it was extraordinary. He just heard a uh, hespid from Binyamin's dad. In English, he's an Englishman, uh, and he said it was a, a hespid that he didn't understand one word. This Rosh Hashiva from Tzfat, he said, right. <laughs> "I didn't understand one word." He said, "But then kalatati, but I understood that Binyamin grew up in a home where they spoke English in the house, a, a Western family, an Anglo family, and Binyamin is was su such a, a fiery lover of Eretz Israel." He said he lived and spoke with such Eretz Yisraeliyut. That was the term he used. <laughs> such Eretz Yisraeliyut. He, he was working with every day off he had from, from the army. He was running to go work on the farm. And the last wow. thing he told his friends was to shmor ala kerem, you know, take care of my vine. The person who, who, was, who was crazy for the land of Israel. Wow. Uh, you're, you're the son of Olim. And, um, and my daughters are the, are the children of Olim. Grandson of Olim. We had Adam three sons make Aliyah in about a year and a half of each other. My grandfather was 88 years old when he got on a plane and said, and and he remembers saying goodbye to his grandparents in Pennsylvania in the, to the British Mandate of Palestine in the 1920s. Who said goodbye wow. to their kids and grandkids? Got on a boat to go to to go to Israel. So we say that Aliyah and Eretz Israel is in our blood. So, so that, that's what I wanted to. I want to. I want to just ask you. This is an important question because yes, as we're, we're talking about again, Amudim is our host here today, and and I'm grateful to them for for, for making this uh, shidduch with us here. Um, I, I, there, there's something about the the, the Vilna Gaon describes the the state of affairs of a Jew living in Chutzlar. It's as one of being unhealthy. Spiritually unhealthy and 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 a, and a disconnect between body and soul creates an imbalance. There's something ill about the the existence of of the Jewish nation in exile outside of its natural healthy place, which is called Eretz Achaim, Eretz Israel. And um, it struck me so deeply the way that uh, Rav Yaakovovich mentioned this notion of of Olim making such a contribution and such an impact on society, and and the child of immigrants. Hashem Yikom Damo, reaching the greatest expression of Eretz Yisrael youth. And, and, and when I'm listening to you and sharing your videos uh, and then the past around, and, and you and, and, and so many other good, good chaverim who are, who are sons and daughters of Olim, who are themselves made Aliyah, um, I feel like there's such a, an Eretz Yisrael youth, and that's an important part of the narrative here of, of, of this incredible opportunity that we have here, heading toward the light together, um, in Kibbutz Goliath, in, in, in this new chapter, hopefully this last chapter in Tanakh here that we're writing together, um, a message perhaps. There are a lot of people who are going to be watching this in Chutz Laaretz. A lot of people are going to be watching all around the world, caring, feeling, sensitive, engaged uh, Jews who, who care deeply for the state of Israel, for the people of Israel. Is there something that that uh, that you could share that, uh, that, that, that that from your experience as an Ole and as the child and grandchild of Olim about the impact that you can make here in Eretz Israel? Wow, <laughs> it's a, that's a big one. Um, I, I'm going to tap into my 
I'm going to switch hats for a second from my army beret to my tour guiding hat. And I'll tell you that I take families with kids on trips to Israel and the, the parents warn me. They say, my kid doesn't like to learn. He doesn't, he's not interested in the history. He doesn't really care about Israel. He's got no, he just wants to have fun. Can we do that? And I say to them, we're going to be having fun. We're also going to be learning at the same time. He might not even know that we're learning when we're having fun, but we're also going to be learning at the same time. And then they come to Israel and we start going around to all these places and going to going on hikes, jumping into the natural springs and going to the important sites that make our Jewish history, that connect us to what is the Jewish people doing here? And the parents tell me, I've never seen my kid like this in their yeah. lives. This is not my child. Who is this kid? The kid's asking questions and he's interested and the fire of his neshama burns. And I'm like, this is not the same kid as your kid in America because the land is not the same land as the land of America. And I see it. I see it. The parents are like, who is this? And I say to them, I say, is this the same kid you told me that doesn't like listening, isn't interested? And they want to know everything. They want to know every story. They tell me as we're walking through the water tunnels of Chizkiyahu's tunnels, 2,700 years old, they're telling me, Arki, can you tell me more stories? You know what I mean? And it's not because of anything I'm doing. It's, a, it's the land. It's the land and it's coming here. And so it awakens a part of you. And so if I had a, a suggestion is if you can't, if you can't eat the fruits of the land, every meal of your life, at least come here and get a taste. You know what I mean? At least come here and get a taste. See what it's all about. You see these. Exactly. Meld, no, then you see all these. Oops, hold on. And you see all these soldiers. Yeah, that's what happens when you put a phone on a Hummer. You see, you see all these soldiers willing to sacrifice their lives for this land and for this people. You see all these people willing to put their lives on the line and to put their hearts on the line and everything. And it might be a little bit strange to you in America saying to yourself, what is it about this place? So, as they say, Come and find out, and you you'll see, and you'll experience it, and you'll feel it, and 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 it's 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 I think it's addicting. It's literally addicting. Chaver, wherever you are, understand this is what soul looks like. This is what soul looks like. This is what light looks like. This is what living a life of purpose, of meaning, of clarity, of mission looks like. This is what it sounds like. This is what it could feel like. To love God with all of our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our resources, with, with all that we have. This is Ahavas Yisrael. This is what sacrifice looks like. This is what King David's army looks like. And we're all a part of it. And uh, Arki, I can't, I can't thank you enough for, uh, for being so open and embracing and, and uh, inviting us into <laughs> the Hummer. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, and really, no, but really really extending the front lines, understanding that the front lines is in every single home and in every single heart in Am Yisrael and among all the good people of the world. And uh, we're all in this together. We're so grateful to you for your sacrifice, sure. for your family's sacrifice. We're davening with you. We're davening for you. Thank you so much. It, you, you feel it. You feel the connection between what's going on in every house, every Jewish house in the world and, what, and what's going on here. And it's inseparable. And that's what I'm trying to do with some of my videos is just saying like your actions, your your good, your light changes reality over here. And it changes reality both in the spiritual sense, shakes the 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 heavens, and also in the physical sense of it makes us realize what we're fighting for and understand that this is the this is the greatest people in the world. This is the greatest land in the world. This is the greatest place in the world. This is the the greatest set of morals and a value the Torah in the world. And so why would I not? Why would I even think twice? It, it's so it, the more you guys are involved, Am Yisrael, the more clear our mission becomes. Yeah, I mean, I, there's never been uh, in our lifetimes a more heavy and intense, serious 
challenging and difficult time and there's never been a more potential and, and exciting uh, opportunity for us to to come together and to strengthen the bonds that uh, that bring us together and for us to express Nishmas Yisrael, the soul of the Jewish people, and to, to win this war together in Mitzvah Shem. And the timing of it, the timing of it was so interesting, wasn't it? When the Jews seemed to be so far apart from each other. And now it's like that was a different world. That was a different universe. Yeah. We should, we should be think... worthy. We should be worthy of your sacrifice and, and of the sacrifice of, of all of Am Yisrael. We should be worthy. We should be worthy of, uh, and this process should be bechesed of arachim. It should be with compassion and it should be gentle. And uh, and God willing, we should only see revealed good. Amen. You should, you, should, um, you, should, you should take care of business, brother. You should, first of all, what you're doing, you should be bored. I, bored, Not totally be bored. bored. Be bored. You should be bored. The chevra should just, just go all in. And, 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 and the greatest, most revealed, sweetest revenge over the honor of the Jewish people and for the honor of Hashem, there should be revealed vengeance and there should be Kiddush Hashem and God willing, should come home. We should be able to continue Hakafos together. Amen. 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 Okay. Love you, brother. L'chaim. Thank you so much. This was excellent. Zat Hashem, after the war, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll meet up again. You bet. Maybe, I would love that. Maybe I'll have the opportunity to come and, and speak to speak to people. We can do something live in person. Oh, I want to bring my kid. I want to. What am I? I want to try to take my kids uh, on a tour so I can go away with my wife. What are you talking about? Good. Sounds good. Sounds okay, much love, brother. Come home safe. Come home safe. Amen. 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 